another five yard penalty. And the Cougars can't shoot themselves in the foot here with penalties on this critical drive. Ball comes back now to the left hash mark as the officials mark off the penalty. It'll be first and 15 now from the Dakota 41. 37.2 seconds to play. As the drama builds. Four wide set now for Dakota. Wojciechowski takes a snap. Deep drop, in trouble, down he goes at the 34. Norito is there again. Boy, Tom Norito, with a great play there, blowing up the middle of that defense. And I wouldn't be surprised here, Kevin, if you see the Cougars tuck it in, tuck it in, and wind out the clock, perhaps, since the Big Reds are out of timeouts. Well, it's, uh, although it's second down right now, um, you know, you, uh, I'm looking at it, and, you know, I, I'm sitting here, you know, kind of wishing we had uh, a weapon like Sam Anderson, and uh, we don't, so the Cougars have him, and I, I think uh, if I'm the offensive coordinator from Dakota, I give, I give the big fella a chance uh, to make a play for my team. He's made great plays for the team all year long. Um, Got a feeling he's going to get a lot of accolades this year for himself, for his performance on the football field. And, uh, you know, just as the Big Reds have uh, ran, on the, uh, ran on the legs and arm of Jimmy Deliz here, the Cougars seem to go pretty much this year the way of Todd Wojciechowski and Sam Anderson, their senior leaders, among others. So we'll see what the Cougars decide to do here. But uh, the passing attack's been good all year. I think they'll take a shot at it. Yeah, my mistake. It's only second down. The first, the penalty on first down is was not loss of down. So it's second down in about 20. Split backs now for Wojciechowski. Deep drop. Slips. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for reeling. Well, the ball was thrown a little bit short. Dave was behind, beyond the first down marker. So now with uh, 25 seconds to go, or 24 seconds to go, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Giannone does here on third down. As Reeling, surprisingly, Reeling's been hobbling now for the, about the last four plays, and he's the guy the Cougars keep going to. Well, it's kind of fun to watch when the... Uh ex-assistant coaches become head coaches. I think sometimes then they get a little more conservative on some of these situations. <laughs> Seen Coach Carr a little bit like that this year, which uh, when, when you're the head coach, you got to make the tough decision. And uh, Cougars look to uh, go for it here on third down. Todd being pressured and sacked by the Big Red. Well, that's probably going to do it. Wojciechowski goes down at the 32. The clock is going to run out. The Big Reds can't stop it. And Kevin? We are going to head to overtime in a high school football classic, 28-28 at the end of regulation. And regardless of the outcome of this football game, these two teams have put on an unbelievable show. Well, if you were here, you should be standing right now and giving a standing ovation to both teams and players as it has been a great contest between two well-coached teams who have played hard all night long. And uh, if you're on the Big Red sideline at this point, you gotta feel real good about going to overtime because at halftime, you, didn't, you couldn't have felt too good about the situation you're looking at. Cougars uh, had a big drive to get that 28th point in the third quarter, but uh, we'll see what happens here in overtime. Uh, you got a chance to look at it, Kevin. Why don't you explain to everybody what's gonna happen here in overtime? Well, MHSAA overtime is a little bit different than you may be uh, used to if you're an NFL fan. Both teams will get a shot. It is not sudden death. What will happen is there will be a coin toss first. The visiting team will call it. The winner of the coin toss then will decide whether or not to take the ball first or to go on defense. If they like to go on defense, they choose the goal that they would like to defend. After the first team has the ball, they, well, when the first team gets the ball, they will have four downs from the 10-yard line to put some points on the board. If the first team scores a touchdown, 
and kicks the extra point. The second team gets a shot at it. And if you, um, in the Cougars win over Rochester, that's what happened. For example, we'll recount what happened in the DHS win over the Rochester Falcons. The Rochester Falcons won the toss and deferred. They allowed Dakota to go ahead and take the ball first. Dakota scored on a 23-yard touchdown after a penalty. Kicked the extra point and went up 28-21. Rochester then got their shot through a, touch through a touchdown pass on their first try, then missed the extra point. The ball game was over 28-27. So that's the kind of scenario that you could see play out here. What it also says is that you may want to go back to that fridge again and get another snack because if the two teams continue to trade scores, it could go on for a while. So it, the, the coin toss is very important, and um, you know each coach has their own theory about whether or not they want the ball first or whether or not they want to go on defense first. So uh, we will see what the coin toss dictates, what the strategy is of both of these fine coaches, and how it all plays out. The only way I'd go to that fridge right now is if you've got this thing taped on uh, VCR and I'd push the pause button so I wouldn't miss a play. Uh, both teams, <laughs> just a great finish here. Unbelievable uh, game as uh, two teams coming out tonight about as equal as you could ask for. Cougars totally dominant in the first half. Big Reds have dominated the second half, but the Cougars still did what they had to do, got on the board and got that touchdown to get them 28. Big Reds fortunate at the end to be able to score on a great throw by Jim DeLiz to Eric Bauer, who redeemed himself for dropping a, a catchable ball right before that, but made a great catch. And then Bobby Frontero's uh, heart-stopping extra point got us to this point right now. Uh, Kevin, we'll let you call it here. The officials are gathered out there, and I think they're gonna bring a couple captains out and make the call here, and we'll see what's gonna happen here in overtime between the Dakota Cougars and the Chippewa Valley Big Reds. Uh, it's just been an unbelievably outstanding game. One of these teams will move on in the playoffs, but like we said, regardless of who wins or loses this game, these teams have had great seasons and have put on an unbelievable show tonight. Here we go for the coin toss. As the captains will meet at midfield, and the fans having a chance now to catch their breath. Felici, Matway, Pfefferman, Hashigian, and Deliz out there. Wojciechowski, Sasson, Fainer, Serpian, and LaPiccolo out there for the Cougars. Here's the toss. Sasson called it, or excuse me, Wojciechowski called it. And now there's some discussion. It looks like the Cougars have won the toss and will take the ball first. Big Reds are pointing to the goal, which they would like to defend. Here's the call. Dakota will receive the ball first. Or excuse me, they, okay. Well, I jumped the gun there. Dakota won the toss and deferred. So now Chippewa Valley will get a crack at it from the 10-yard line. No time on the clock except for the, the play clock. And it'll be four downs from the 10 for the Big Reds. You know, one thing I'd like to mention here tonight, Kevin, I think it's a perfect time to mention it, is how it, impressive it is for us to have split into two high schools about four or five years ago, be sitting here tonight with two teams at 9-1, and one, uh, excellent you know, double-A or top division teams in the state of Michigan, uh, division one teams, and uh, battling for a district championship. It's a scary thought if you put the squads together about how talented this club could be. So uh, it's a credit to the coaching staffs and to all the kids and athletes in the community that we've uh, been able to come out here with two fine football teams and uh, I guess enjoy this tonight. Uh, it's been great for everyone involved. We hope you have enjoyed it here on the Chippewa Channel. Big Reds get it first. Big Reds with Jim DeLiz. Stayed healthy all year this year. First and 10 from the 10. Achigan split right. Lamazny the running back. Quarterback sneak, no secret there. Jimmy gets about four yards on first down. Didn't think about it ahead of time, but as soon as you saw him go, you realized, hey, it's been a good play for him here in the second half, and uh, appears to have picked up three or four on first down for the Big Reds. 
Yeah, that time Jim dove straight ahead, and uh, the Cougars did a better job than they've done throughout the ball game in stopping that play, perhaps with the game on the line now. Uh, a little extra uh, adrenaline in there. Well, there isn't too much room behind you here when they give you the ball at the 10-yard line, so you got to get serious on defense. Big Reds, second down, about seven to go. Deliz hands off to Lamazny, gets a little bit of room, fumbles the ball, and the ball is recovered by the Dakota Cougars. And Big Reds will end their possession. Cougars will take over with a chance to win this ball game on offense. Well, the Cougars now will take over, and they'll get it at the 10, and theoretically you could send Brian Henderson on right now to kick a field goal and win the ball game. Let's see what Coach Giannone does. He's got the offense on, out there. They'll have four cracks from the 10-yard line. 28-28, tie ball game in overtime. The Big Reds coming up short, coming up empty on their opening possession. And they are going to bring on the field goal unit right now. Well, the Big Reds get one timeout in overtime. You would assume they'd use it here to try and ice Brian Henderson. It's what the Cougars did to Ryan Furstall in their playoff game. There's some confusion out there on the DHS offense. They better make sure they've got the right number of people and personnel out there. Now Jason Thole's going to call timeout. Well, the Cougars there, perhaps, uh, not quite sure of what they wanted to do. Spent a lot of time. And they'll call their own timeout here and line up on the 10-yard uh, line. So interesting strategy here. And we'll see if Brian Henderson comes back out after this timeout. See if Mike Giannone perhaps doesn't change his mind and probably try and pound this one into the end zone. Well, I think they're going to bring the kicker back out. I think they were kind of confused on the offensive line, weren't really set. And really, uh, Thole did a nice job of calling a timeout. To, to not give up five yards and make the kick five yards longer. So uh, Mike might change his mind, but uh, we'll see what they decide to do. As the Cougars take over on first down, having four plays to try and score, and here they come out, and it appears that they've had a change of heart, and they're going to put their offense on the field. Well, now the offense trots back onto the field. They will come in with their goal line package from the 10-yard line. And you can bet that those big reds will be coming in there trying to knock that ball loose. Goal line package here, Parslo in motion. Wojciechowski will keep it. He'll roll to the 10, to the 5, cut it outside. Is he in? Dakota Cougars. The Cougars have upset the Big Reds 34-28 in overtime. Todd Wojciechowski from 10 yards out in overtime as the Cougars rush the field. What an unbelievable football game. The Cougars jubilant at midfield. will line up now to congratulate the Chippewa Valley Big Reds on a very, very well-played game as the two coaches embrace at the 25. Dakota will move on to play the winner of Grand Blanc and Clarkston. The Big Reds finish the season at 9-2. So the change of heart there works out for Mike Giannone. His senior quarterback, Todd Wojciechowski, takes it in for the touchdown. And uh, just a huge win and a great football game. Well, it was a great game, and congratulations to the Cougars. Congratulations to the Big Reds. It was an excellent football game. Uh, at the end, Big Reds fumble on their possession. Cougars are able to pounce on it. And on first down, Todd Wozerhowski runs seven yard, or 10 yards around the left side for a touchdown. Your final score, once again, from Chippewa Valley Stadium. District final in overtime. The Dakota Cougars 34, the Chippewa Valley Big Reds 28. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation here on the Chippewa Channel. Once again, congratulations to both teams on fine seasons and an absolutely great game. For Kevin Voss, this is Kevin Koskis signing off. Once again, your final, Dakota 34, Chippewa 28. Good night.